Hey guys, it's me, Tony. I've gone all Cybertronic because I'm a video game player. Or at least what a video game player looks like when they put one in movies or TV. It's today in Nerd History. Today in Nerd History. Hollywood doesn't understand video games. I mean, that should be clear from the state of video game movies alone. But why is it that people tend to let it slide when video games are portrayed poorly in movies and TV? Rather than, say, licensing actual video games, much like movies and TV license actual songs, movies and TV like to invent the most batshit bizarre fake video games and then pay a bunch of actors to stand in a room and pretend that they're having fun. Here are the five most batshit fake video games in movies and TV. The X-Files, first person shooter. On paper, this was a match made in heaven. William Gibson, the author of Neuromancer, the father of cyberpunk, the person who's responsible for the word cyberspace, writing a science fiction episode of The X-Files. I mean, <laughs> how could it go wrong? Turns out, uh, all of the ways. This episode, titled First Person Shooter, is about a first person shooter that is titled First Person Shooter, and that's just the start of the problems. The developers say that the game is going to be the next big thing, and they're preparing to launch copies worldwide, whatever that means, as it's essentially a warehouse with VR goggles and fake guns. Also, naturally, there's a sexy lady on the loose of the game who's killing players for real. This is my game. The episode is a confounding mishmash of dude bro shoot 'em up archetypes and a active disdain, it would seem, for people who create and play video games. The only thing that's certain is that the father of modern sci-fi thought the most popular game in the world would be a glorified light gun shooter where you stand in one place and blow up tank after tank. And the only other certain thing is that David Duchovny hates this. Bring it on. Existence. In the 1980s, David Cronenberg, the master of surrealist body horror, made a movie called Videodrome, a satire of television culture solely so that he could have James Woods take a VHS tape and stick it into a vagina that grows in his chest. But in the 1990s, in the wake of the video game revolution, he made Existence, which, contrary to the name, is not a pill to make your junk quadruple in size, but instead is a movie filled with other grotesque body horrors. The movie imagines a future where video games aren't played with plastic consoles, but uh, instead gross juicy flesh sacks with umbilical cords that you plug into a tiny butthole in your back that Willem Dafoe gives you in a dirty truck stop. While the movie is hypnotically watchable, it seems to be confused as to what actually happens in video games. EXISTENCE IS PAUSED! Remember the mission in GTA where you eat a bunch of fish and use the bones to build a gun to kill your waiter for no discernible reason? No? Oh, I'm sorry, I must have been confusing it with existence. Never Say Never Again. Never Say Never Again was the James Bond movie that Sean Connery made 12 years after he quit the role forever, and you could see the tired resignation in his face the whole way through the movie. But never is he so clearly more disinterested than when a 52-year-old Sean Connery has to play a made-up video game called Domination. I'm guessing from the ludicrously ornate wood, gold, and ivory cabinet that this game's only for rich people and that's why I haven't heard of it? Or maybe it just never caught on because it's nonsensical slog in which you use joysticks to fire lasers at countries while defending yourself from nukes that are being fired at you by your opponent. The game's joysticks emit a mild electric shock to put pain and discomfort into the losing player. Much like the pain and discomfort of the people watching this, who are supposed to pretend that it looks remotely like a thing that would ever exist. Hey, hey, buck up, Sean. In less than five years, you'll be in Indiana Jones, and the, your career is just golden from there. The Ghost Whisperer. No one should be surprised that a ghost-themed procedural starring the dead-eyed Jennifer Love Hewitt would be bad, and yet, hey, hey! Here we are. A hallmark of crappy gimmick procedurals, the show featured an episode with a crime centering around a knockoff of Second Life. The game in the show is treated as the premier hangout spot for all teens, replete with violently bland DDR-style minigames and a completely fake-looking version of internet shorthand. And maybe the most impressive thing is the system specs that this game has to require. This guy's overclocked his GPU to make it really rip. If you overclock your rig, it kicks. And this girl over here, she was given a monster beef horse rig to run this tepid porridge of polygon Detritus. With mad skills and a fast machine. Of course, maybe the production budget was all saved for the sequence where JLH gets her ghost brain sucked into the machine to duke it out in the real version of the game world. If anything, this sequence just confirms that Second Life would be just as crappy if it were real life. Star Trek The Next Generation makes you come in your pants. Star Trek The Next Generation, often pointed to as a herald of smart television sci-fi, featured an addictive video game that made you feel so good you'd come in your pants. Okay, that's never outwardly stated, but are we really supposed to read this any other way? It's a game. 
everyone who is playing it. This game must be fun AF! What do the initials AF stand for? It means as f little Will Wheaton as f the game looks fun as f <laughs> AF. The game features a play space where tubes hungrily slurp up discs, which is probably as close to actual P and V that the sensors would allow. Which is pretty amazingly toned back, considering that this episode features a woman with a literal butt and vagina growing out the middle of her face. The game turns out to be a nefarious plot to take over the Enterprise, but the day is saved by the dweeby pubescent Wesley Crusher who manages to resist engaging in sexy time games. Which probably didn't help the show's reputation of being for virginal nerds. Luckily, as time has passed, we now know that you can watch Star Trek and be a normal functioning human being, and that little Will Wheaton was probably getting his D-wet like constantly. <laughs> Set phasers to fuck. Well, my dudes, thanks for watching, but ugh, I gotta go back to the battle zone. <laughs>